Good morning, guys. Happy Tuesday. I don't know why I'm a little blurry this morning. That's okay. Welcome to the Fearless Morning Show. We are having confessions and conversations about your everyday life and finances. Okay, I had to write something out. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to the Fearless Morning Show. We're having confessions about your everyday life. My name is Yamitra Jojo Waddell, the only Live Past Crazy Special, so what better place to be than here with me? Are you guys ready to get this day started? I know I am. It's going to be a lovely Tuesday. I hope everybody had a safe weekend. I hope that you had fun, but you were safe. That is the best thing, that you had a good time. While we're doing that, let me share. Please make sure you share the video because sharing is caring. If your friends and family do not have Facebook, please remind them that we do have a YouTube channel where you can binge watch all the Fearless Morning shows every day. Let's see if we can start a watch party this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Fearless Morning Show, where we are having confessions and conversations about um, your everyday life. My name is Yamitra Jojo Wada, the only Live Past Crazy Special, so what better place to be than here with me. Yes, this is the office edition. And y'all, my office, like a tornado, has literally went through here. It is, it's insane, but that's okay. That's okay, that's okay. Hope everybody had a great weekend. So, um, today's fearless thought for today. Actually, it's like a comment. Maybe. It's a thought. Good morning, Courage. How are you? I caught some of your show this morning. Your live. I got to go back and finish watching all of it because you know you got me with the, the title. And that's something I talk about all the time. Uh, Y'all, please take, check out Courage's video. She was talking about, are you praying or is it procrastination? Did I get that right? And sometimes, y'all know me. I tell you, we praying for an answer. Ooh, Jesus, work it out for me. When he gave you the answer, you just don't want to do the work of the answer. You don't want to do the work that's required. There's nothing that you are going to pray about that God does not require you to do some action because he's not a genie in a bottle. How about that? All right, so guys, here is the, the filler stop for the day. If we want to, and please make sure you share the video because sharing is caring. So my theme, uh, last couple, of, has it been two weeks ago, I talked about freedom and the fact that I, I was scared to say that word freedom, that that's what I wanted, freedom to, to do the things that I needed to do and freedom to be who I am. I've been walking in it slowly, but I want the complete freedom of it. And so that is... My thing for the rest of the year is freedom, um, and I'm going to do some. And I got this idea from um, Alicia Ma. She celebrated her birthday the whole month of May, so I'm going to celebrate June. I told her I was going to steal her idea, so I'm going to celebrate the whole month of June. I think I may do um, a few webinars. If you guys are interested, maybe give away a couple of books. So let me know. But freedom is my, is my theme for the rest of the year. All right, so here's the here's the fearless thought for the day. Are you protecting yourself from growth? Are you protecting yourself from growth? And I want to read two inserts. We daily, we now experience daily the daily need to defend our self-concepts rather than ourselves. Our major struggles end up being with our own inner fears 
insecurities and destructive behaviors and patterns, not with outside forces. Are you protecting yourself from growth? And that's it. So if you if you're protecting yourself from growth, that means you are willingly participating. Good morning, Kiva. It means you are willingly participating in the destructive behavior patterns and thought processes, interferes and insecurities. And it is not the outside forces that is causing it. So let me read that again. We now experience the daily need to defend our self concept. Remember, we want to defend our ego first, right? Our major struggle ends up being with our own inner fears, securities, and destructive behaviors, and not with outside forces. When you start on this fearless journey, or whatever journey you want to call it, whatever name you want to call it, when you start on it, there can be no part of you that you're not willing to look at and address and talk about and then work through and move forward. If you think you're going to piecemeal this thing, so... Here's my thing. This is our starting point. We know we want to end up here. Here is the invisible road. The invisible road is the things that you can't quite see, that you don't quite understand. But here is where you meet yourself along the journey. This is where you reintroduce yourself. But this is also where you are doing all the work of you. And when you start on this journey, you get for real, real about it. You become, I ain't going to say desperate, but you urgently seek the answers of your soul. You urgently seek them. <laughs> and if you're not willing to look at all parts of you, then what you'll find is crazy may be gone from this section, but it's going to multiply in another section. Crazy may be gone. So confessions and conversations, y'all know I always use myself, for example. So I was willing to do the work of getting past a crazy relationship, an ex-husband that beat me. I was ready to get past that. I got past that. I was ready to get past homeless. I got past that. Got a place to stay. I was willing to get past getting a job. Got that. I was willing to get past, well, Jojo, you got a bachelor's. Go get your master's. I got past that. I got past things. But when it came down, see, I was picking and choosing what I wanted to work on. <laughs> and it doesn't quite work that way. So when I was picking and choosing what I wanted to work on, I found that the crazy was continuing multiplying in other areas. So when I I thought I had addressed my relationship issues because I left my abuser, but what I had not addressed was myself. And that's because we don't want to check our ego and we want to protect ourselves from ourselves. And sometimes our ego is what allows us to stop growing. So sometimes we are protecting our, our ego and so we can't grow. And you say, well, Jojo, hey, Jojo, you've, done, you've gone as far as you can go. Guilty. I said that. When I was at IBM, I said, Jojo, you've gone as far as you can go. When I was at Duke, I said, you've gone as far as you can go. When I, I got laid off from the law firm, I said, this is as far as you can go. But are, am I protecting myself from growth because I am holding on to my ego and then daily I'm defending my ego and my excuses and my choices because my excuses are always going to be valid. They're never going to go away. But am I spending more time protecting the very thing that I say I don't like so that I can continue? So that way I no longer have the responsibility to make the change that I know is necessary to get me where I need to be. Because it says daily we need to defend our self-concepts of ourselves and our struggle ends up being with our own inner fears and securities and destructive patterns and not outside behaviors so to me when i read that it was like ta-da jojo you ain't mad at everybody else everybody else not the problem girl the problem may be you are you protecting yourself from growth it could, it could be Jojo that's stopping all things that need to be simply because I don't want to look at all aspects of me. If you want to, my name is Jojo, the only live past crazy special. So what better place to be than here with me? I understand crazy to the ninth degree. I also understand that if I am not willing to look at all parts of me, then the crazy is going to manifest itself somewhere else. Now, you may not think that's true. Let me give you an ex let me give you some more because you know we do confessions and conversations over here. 
Let me give you some more, another example. So if I'm steady protecting myself from growth, that means I necessarily don't want to address my relationship with my mama because <laughs> I'm protecting myself from my growth. So if I don't want to address the relationship with my mother, that means it's going to manifest in how I talk to my children. That means it's going to manifest in how I present myself to the outside world. That means it's going to manifest in my inner roommate, my thought process, how I think about myself, how I think about things, how I process things, because I got two voices in there. I got my mama's and I got mine. And then when I go to make a decision, whose voice is dominant? Whose voice is taking over rather than mine? And until I was ready to look at all aspects of me, so I don't address the education, I don't address the place to live, the man ain't beat me no more, the girls are doing fine. But that crazy, of that thing that I did not want to address because I wanted to blame it on somebody else, because I'm daily defending my ego, meaning I'm daily defending the crazy that I see. I'm defending it. Y'all, my my family crazy. I don't even know what else to say. You know, that's just the way they are. Instead of me addressing what that crazy is. It says we daily, we need to daily defend our ego in the self -con in our self-concept. Our major struggle ends up being with our own inner fears, insecurities, and destructive patterns that are not outside forces. That means I have to... I don't want to deal with it because then I don't want to have to deal with the insecurities that I may have had for a long time. I may not want to have to deal with how I don't feel good about myself in a certain light. Or I may have to deal with maybe we don't have the best mama-daughter relationship. And, and when I do that, I then have to apply that to my children. Am I projecting... Again, somebody else's fears onto my children, somebody else's thought process, including my process, onto my girls. So are they three generations deep in crazy thinking? Are they, because they're watching me daily, clearly, they're watching me daily. And before a child is five, well, by the time they hit seven, they have, in, they have picked up all your habits, all your thought processes, your mechanisms, and your mannerisms to know that if mommy is doing it this way, it is A-OK. -okay. So just think if you're 40, <laughs> 43, and you are just now starting on this inner work of yourself because you can't piecemeal it together. Because if you're protecting yourself from your growth, you're not going to grow. You're going to grow to a certain extent and then it's going to stop. And then we're going to wonder, well, why can't I go any further? Well, that's the answer. You got to do it all. There's no part of you that you can't be willing to see. There's no part of you that you can't be willing to check. Because I check, listen, I check myself all the time. When I want to get mad, when I want to get angry, people think it's a cur Right. Because... Nerd science. Can we go? Can we do some nerd science here? Thank you, Margaret. That, pat, that behavior pattern started out as somebody doing something to you. So a man or your mom or somebody hurt your feelings and you held on. They hurt your feelings and you developed an emotion with it. So then you mad and it's two or three days later. Now it's done become a mood. And then your mood has lasted a week or two. Then it becomes it becomes stronger on you. And eventually, here you are three months in, and now it's your behavior. It's who you are. And people associate you with it because of the one thing that you held on. You need to go back to that one thing and figure out why. If it hurt you, because here's, y'all, your body doesn't know the difference between the past and the present. So if somebody hurt you, if your mama hurt your feelings, if she broke your heart, a man broke your heart, he hurt your feelings. If you keep reliving it in your mind, your body doesn't know that it's not currently happening, even though it was 30 years ago. Your body assumes it's happening right now because it has all the emotions and all the feelings of it. And so you are constantly reliving your crazy and your body doesn't know the difference. It assumes that it is real and it is right now. And so think about that in terms of how then is that stopping your growth process? Because it's, <laughs> come on, 
Jojo, as soon as you try to move past it, you remember how it felt. You remember what they thought about. And then you have that emotion and then you're right back in the same feelings again. And we ain't moved past it. We just continuing on. You're comfortable with it. Right. So y'all know my quote. This is my personal quote. Some of us would rather deal with the comfort of crazy than the discipline of freedom. Some of us would rather keep protecting our inner ego instead of doing the work. There's no part of you that you can't be willing to see. You have to be willing to see all of it. Your daily, your daily need to defend your own self-concept. Your major struggles end up being with your own inner fears, insecurities, and destructive behavior. Insecurities, y'all, y'all was with me like, right, Margaret, trauma, it's traumatizing over and over and over again. That's why you can't stop complaining because your body becomes addicted to the feeling and the, the chemicals it produces in your body. Your body becomes addicted to that. So it wants you to constantly feel that way so it can get that high. And you can use complaining. It's harder to to stop complaining than it is to come off a drug. And that's sad. Think about that. But you can also think about that in terms of you complaining about your baby daddy. You complaining about your mama. You complaining about your job. Because you're just reinforcing the thought process in that habit. You've got to be, there's no part of you that you can't be willing to see. And you're protecting yourself. Are you protecting yourself from your own growth? Are you? Is your ego on 10,000 to the point where I know I'm not fixing them and we ain't about to. And I, I wish somebody would. But here's the thing. We, we can talk all the game. But when it comes to holding ourselves to the standard that we want set for everybody else, we don't even hold ourselves to that same standard. That's because we are battling our own insecurities, um, our own problems, our own issues, our own fears, because we're trying to protect ourself, our self-concept of ourselves. So here, confessions and conversation, here's mine. I called Margaret at, at what time, Margaret? 12 o'clock last night? <laughs> so if y'all been with me for a while, you know, uh, last month, um, well, last, yeah, it was last month I said, hey, I'm a, I'm afraid to have this event or I'm scared to have this event because I don't think people will come. And that was me trying to protect myself from my own growth and not willing to deal with my own interferes and insecurities that I could not do that. So now I've learned quicker to work through this process. OK, so this is what I did. Jojo, yes, you want to have this event. Yes, you're afraid that people may not come. But am I more, where's my quote? Am I more afraid that they will not come? Or am I more afraid that I'm not going to uh, live in my purpose and do what I need to do? And the more I thought about it, y'all let me get my, let me get my quote uh, by Andrea Lord. Y'all know me. Uh, and then the more I thought about it, the more it made me think about I'm more afraid of what I can and cannot do. I'm more afraid of if I don't do this, what will happen? I'm more afraid of the girl seeing me not trying my best. I'm more afraid of that than I am to say, hey, I'm afraid to do this event but I'm going to do it anyway because I have to work through my own inner fears and insecurities. Now, I ain't going to say that they don't go away. I am saying that you get to move past them quicker. And so for me, it was, Jojo, you're afraid because you, you never done this before. Okay, people have done it before and guess what? They didn't die. So that's not a valid reason. And this is how I talk to myself. And so then I... You remember we talked last week about connecting the dots when you have your bigger vision and you don't know how to make it happen. You connect to the dots. Y'all, I got out. Let me see if I can show y'all. Y'all see these sticky notes? I got out sticky notes and I wrote it out just like I said. I took the big and I made it the small and I started to connect the dots. And then this is where your purpose partners come in. When it becomes overwhelming, I can call that purpose partner at 12 o'clock at night. Who just happens to be up and say, this is the moment 
I have. And what am I gonna what am I gonna do with it? And they talk you off the ledge and say, okay, it's gonna be okay. Right. I was with thank you, Beverly. Thank you for connecting us. That's what I was trying to say. I was afraid of my own growth because my insecurities of Judge, who are you again to uh to be doing this event? Who are you to be doing a business? Who are you to be doing a book tour? First of all. And then if you allow yourself to go down that rabbit hole, you will be back at the beginning. But now, you know, on the journey in the beginning, you're going to find yourself in that rabbit hole. You ain't going to know how to get out. Now I'm pretty quick with stop. This is what we not fixing to do. And this is how I talk to myself. Georgia, this is what we not fixing to do. Number one. Number two, I call a purpose partner and I walk it out. Number three, I grab my journal and I write it out. Number, I'm a fan of meditation and deep breathing. I threw on a meditation app and I did some deep breathing and I calmed myself all the way down because you can work yourself up into a panic trying to protect your ego instead of trying to deal with your insecurities and your fears that are there. You think they're going to go away. They're not. They're going to manifest themselves and keep coming. And this is the quote last night. Two quotes that besides Margaret that got me through. When I dare to be powerful, to use my strength in the service of my vision, then it becomes less and less important whether I'm afraid. We talked about that. That was the, the thought of the day last week. That's by Audrey Lord. That's a <laughs> Jasmine. I was falling asleep on me. And I was like, nope. I, I I had all the water, I had all the things, and I was ready. And that quote got me through. After I got off the phone with Margaret, and even before, I, <laughs> yeah, I had to read these so I didn't pass out. And even after I did all of those things, it was still, here's the thing. You can listen to the Fearless Morning Show, and I greatly appreciate you. You can go to all the churches, and you can do all the things, and you can get motivated. You can feel inspired. But it is at that point when you're alone that you are by yourself. That you have to decide what you want to do. It is at that point that you have to decide: Are you going to defend your personal, con your self concept of yourself? Are you going to look at those interferes and insecurities and destructive behaviors? Are you going to look at them for real and handle them? Are you going to decide to protect your ego, protect yourself from growth? And that could be anything. You're protecting yourself from growth by not applying for that job that you know you, you can get. Or staying at the job that you know you hate. Or you protecting yourself from growth for staying in a relationship because at least you know this person. And at least that word at least will kill you, my sister. At least he ain't as bad as. At least he don't do this. Now, there's a difference between compromising in life and we adults. There's a difference between that. And I... And I hope that you know the difference between those. But are you protecting yourself from growth? So that was me last night. Thank you, Beverly, for saying that. I was protecting myself from growth of saying, yes, JoJo, you can do this event. August 23rd through 25th, we're going to be in clear water. bit.ly forward slash um, girlfriends. Listen, I don't forgot the darn link. I'm about to put it up for you. It don't even matter. Here you go. I'm going to post it for you. So that... I was afraid to even say it. I was afraid to even think that I could do it. I was afraid to even think that anybody, I was afraid to even have the thought that anybody would want to come in the first place. How many of us are afraid to even have the thought that somebody could come to, could come to an event? Some of us are even afraid to even have the thought that we could do something different. Some of us are even afraid to think differently, period. And why is that? That's because we're stopping ourselves from growth and we don't want to deal with those interferes and securities. And so that's where I was last night. I was keeping myself from growth and that's where my quote came in. Two of them. When I dare to be powerful, to use my strength in the service of my vision, then it becomes less and less important whether I'm afraid. And y'all know my other quote that it's the, the, first, the first one, the ink done ran off of it. Somebody's waiting to hear my voice and they will not move until I move. And that stays on my computer and I look at it every day. And it is a reminder. I just posted the link and it's bit.ly forward slash girlfriends retreat 2019. bit.ly forward slash girlfriends retreat 2019. 
Um, so please make sure you bring your sister, you bring a friend. There will be a book tour as well. We are Tampa is the first stop. That's July 27th. If you want me to come to your area, please let me know. And I will be more than happy to come to your city to do a book tour, to do a book signing, or perhaps host a Fearless Morning Show. But today's thought, y'all, are you protecting yourself from growth? And you got to be looking at, be willing to look at all parts of you. There's no part of you that you can't be willing to address. And when you, when it becomes urgent, when it becomes a desperate need to understand your thought process or how things are happening in the world, in the universe, and how you as a person can interact into that, then my sister, then the work becomes easier. Then I'm not afraid of what I need to say. I'm not afraid of what I need to do. Then that's where your quotes come in. And if you're having those hard days, that's where your purpose partners come in at 12 o'clock at night. Jasmine got text. She got a, a I am probably at 11 last night. And um, she was talking me through some things. So, hey, you got to be able to call on it. And that's why your purpose partners are, are, are essential. We need, we now experience the daily need to defend our self-concepts. Our major struggles end up being with our own inner fears, our own inner securities, and our destructive behavior patterns, and not with outside forces. Because at some point, y'all, we are the common denominator in our crazy. Yeah, protecting your nonsense is not exactly. But we are bound and determined to protect it. Period. We wonder why we don't have the best relationships with men. It's because we're not willing to look at all parts of us. And that may mean that I'm not holding myself to the standard I want somebody else to hold to. So then I can't hold them to that standard when I can't even hold myself to a standard of self-love. So I want somebody to come in and give me all the things when I can't even love myself enough to even give it back to them. So then it becomes a crazy cycle relationship. Guilty. Been there. Been there, did that, done it. I'm just saying, until we are willing to realize that we may be protecting ourselves from growth, we may be hindering ourselves from moving forward because we're not willing to address all the things, then we're going to stay. And y'all, who am I? I'm just JoJo from Far City. Good morning. Uh, I can't see all the comments. I'm trying to see. Good morning, Monty. Good morning, Cousin Carl. I can't see the comments on here, so I'm trying to look at them here. But if we're not willing to do that work, boo, this is, this is what I know. You may say, JoJo, it don't take all of that. You're correct. It may not take all of that for you, and you may continue on with your life. This is a judgment-free zone. I am your space giver, meaning this is your, some of us, we just need a safe place to know that we can share our thoughts and ideas and what we're going through this is your safe place there is no judgment if you enjoy your life the way it is i am more than happy to to help you enjoy your life all i'm saying is if you want the crazy to stop then perhaps you might need to take a look at what are you protecting yourself from why are you insisting on a relationship that doesn't work why are you insisting to stay at a job that doesn't work? We insist on a lot of things. Have you realized that we insist on a lot? Guilty. We defend our self-concepts a lot. Girl, I can't I can't leave this man because I ain't gonna know where to go. I've been married for so long. And then there's the kids. I can't leave this job, JoJo, because I got I got my benefits. <clears throat> I, I don't put in 20 years. I got time. You know, I don't invested in this. You, you've invested in your crazy quite dearly. And it's costing you your life. And when I realized it was really quite that simple, we are both the problem and the solution. That means JoJo's the problem and JoJo is also the answer. If I do not like the situation, the answer is I have to do the work to get past it. Period. And if I don't realize that I'm both the answer, good morning, Terrence, that I'm both the problem and the answer, then I'm always going to protect my ego, number one. I'm never going to look at all aspects of myself, and I will always have those inner securities, those inner doubts, 
and that destructive behavior. And that destructive behavior could be whatever you want it to be. It could be drinking. It could be smoking. It could be bad relationships. It could be bad friendships. It could be taking low-paying jobs or doing the same thing over and over again because we're good at not necessarily because that's what we want to do. Are you protecting yourself from growth? I think sometimes we are just simply afraid, guilty, of understanding that what is inside of you is truly great and that you, as Margaret says, would hashtag change the world. You absolutely can do it, I think. It can be an overwhelming feeling, an overwhelming thought process to think, hey, Jojo, you can be your sister's keeper. Hey, Margaret, you can change the world. Hey, Jasmine, you can be the entrepreneur of your dreams. And it can be overwhelming. And if we allow it, it can overtake us. So either we're going to do one or two things. We're either going to sit down and let it overtake us and overwhelm us. Or two, we're going to allow it to push us forward to do the things that we need to do. We're all far greater, far smarter than we could ever imagine. It's right here that it becomes overwhelming. Just allow yourself today to think, what if, and you are the person to do it. And I think that's why we protect ourselves from growth. That's why we protect our ego. That's why we, we keep up with the same destructive behaviors. Because if I can continue them, then nobody's going to require more of me. I'm not going to require more of myself. And then I can use all... Here's what I get angry with. And y'all know, y'all have heard this story before, that I see something more in people than they see in themselves. And then they justify, I ain't going to say they justify it. I'm going to say they give their reasons, which are valid. And I don't necessarily understand their reasons. And it's not for me to understand. And so I've had to learn to grow past that. That not every not everybody may want greater. Not everybody may see it as something that needs to be obtained but for me i want my sister because i am my sister's keeper i want my sister to do so much better and i can see the better for her but if she doesn't want to receive the better for herself then it doesn't matter what is poured in because there's no room to receive it meaning if i want my sister to be greater but she's built this box of crazy, right? And she and she's not only built this box of crazy, she likes it. She's decorated it. And she's so busy holding on to all the crazy things in her life. There's no room for her to receive anything that any sister wants to give her. There, she can hear it, but there's no room to receive it. And so that makes it difficult when you want more for other people than they want for themselves. And so you see them daily defending their self concepts, meaning their self ego. Girl, I got, I got to stay here because I, I hate the traffic in the city. So I got to stay here, but I hate my job. I hate my job. I'm not making any money. I don't make enough to support my family. I don't make enough to pay my bills, but because I hate traffic, I've got to stay here. Guilty. I'm dating this man, but I promise I don't want to start over. I just ain't got time because, you know, men are crazy and I just might as well deal with the one I got. And so I'm just going to try to work it out. At least he ain't beat me. He may cuss me out a little bit and he may take my money, but at least he ain't beat me. Guilty. She my friend. We've been friends for over 25 years. But she always put me down. But you know what? She my friend. We've been friends forever. So I'm going to keep her my friend. But when you get off the phone, you feel depressed, sad, depleted, angry, upset, some type of way. But because you vested, you're going to stay in that friendship. Guilty. We protect ourselves from growth all the time. I, I got to get up and go to this job. Lord knows I hate going in here and all these folk get on my nerves. If this woman pop this gum one more time, one more time. And if this man act crazy one more time, blocking self growth, guilty. Because we defend our self concepts. So 
our major struggles end up being our own inner fears, insecurities, and destructive behavior. Because I don't want to grow, I'm going to stay where I'm at. And it, I'm where I'm at because I don't want to look at all aspects of me. I, I can deal with the aspect of my religion. I can deal with the aspect of my man. I can deal with the aspect of my finances. I can deal with the aspect of my career. But I can't deal with the aspect of me that is keeping me from where I need to be. So therefore, I'm going to protect my issue or my problem because it's somebody else's. Because sometimes it's not the outside forces. It is truly us. And if we're not willing to look at all parts, A to the man, guilty, then our crazy will continue. Not only will it continue, my sister, it's going to grow. <laughs> it's going to fester. And before you know it, crazy is going to be so out of control. You can't wrap your arms around it. You can't wrap your head around it. You can't understand it. And then you find yourself over in a corner wondering, how in the hell did I get here? How did this happen right here? When I got my money together, I finally got my job together. I got my friendships together. I got this together. But this thing right here, I can't. That's because... There's no part of you that you can't be willing to look at. And when you start on this journey, it, it's urgent. For me, it becomes urgent that I look at all things. And now I can work through them quicker than I used to. Because before, at one point, I couldn't do it quickly. I had to sit there and cry and sob and holler, Lord, why me? When I realized I'm both the problem and the solution, then things started changing. We started working. And listen, I'm going to close out the show with this. If, with this paragraph. Untethered soul, page 22. If you want to free yourself, you must first become conscious enough to understand your predicament. Then you must commit yourself to do the inner work of freedom. You must do this as your life depends on it because it does. Stand firm in the seat of the witness and release that hold that the habitual mind has on you. This is your life to reclaim. If you want to free yourself, you must first become conscious enough to understand your predicament. That means you got to be all the way real with all the crazy. Then you must commit yourself to the inner work of the freedom. There's no part of you that you can't be willing to look at and address. Done the work. It's hard. It's ugly. You're going to cry. You're not going to like yourself. You're going to be like Jojo. And then in that process, you got to forgive yourself. And then you have to do this as if your life depends on it because it does. And he says, as it is right now, your life is not your own. It belongs to your inner roommate. Y'all know that the other you that taught you like, girl, you know, you can't do that. Jojo, why are you trying to put on your Ain't nobody going to come. That person. You have to take it back. Stand firm and release that hold that the habitual mind has on you. This is your life to reclaim. Y'all, this book, The Untethered Soul. This is page 22, chapter 2. It will get your whole life together. It becomes urgent then. When it becomes urgent for you to do and understand how things are working out for you and the part that you play and what you can and cannot do to assist in that, then it becomes, it becomes important. Are you protecting yourself from your growth? I'm guilty of all the things that I shared today. Guilty of all of them. And last night, I was knee-deep in it, y'all. I was protecting myself from growth. Ain't nobody want to come to this event. Who am I to put on a women's retreat? Who am I to say I'm my sister's keeper? JoJo, who are you? You from Far City, Union Mills, North Carolina. You from a small town. Don't nobody care. I was knee-deep. Knee-deep in that. Then I saw the quote, When I dare to be powerful, to use my strength in the service of my vision, then it becomes less and less important whether I'm afraid. I had to wrap myself up in that meaning. So I'm a visual, I'm a visual person and I visualized myself being supported by the words. Jojo, it is less and less important what you're afraid of as long as you are standing in your power to use your strength and your service. And your service is that you are your sister's keeper. And one sister at a time, this is going to happen. So you, there's no time for you to be afraid. I had to literally wrap myself in those words and stand on them. I had to talk it out to myself. And then that's when I called Purpose Partners. That's when I called Margaret at 12 o'clock at night. 
and she taught me off the ledge. That's how Jasmine gets messages at 11, and I'm keeping her up from sleep. Your purpose partners are essential, but if you don't have those in place right now, you better get you some. You better get you some quotes. And over here is my daily mantra. Those things they help. I'm just saying. So the fearless thought of the day, guys, as I close out: Are you protecting yourself from growth? There should be no part of you that you're not willing to see and work on. And I'm gonna close out with this paragraph. Please make sure you share the video because sharing is caring. If your friends and family do not have Facebook, please remember that we have a YouTube channel and they can binge watch all the Fearless Morning shows over there. I'm trying to get up um, the link. That is the link for the retreat. Uh, and then if you want to pre-order your book for uh, for the book tour, you can go to bit.ly forward slash book tour 2019 to pre-order your book as well. And then if your friends and family do not have Facebook, we do have a YouTube channel where they can binge watch all the Fearless Morning shows. Simply go over to Fearless Morning Show and you can find all, golly, we should have over 400 videos over there now. So that's a, that's a lot. That is a lot of shows. So um, make sure you go over there and check those out. Please make sure you share because sharing is caring. I promise today I want you to help one sister today. It is that simple, yet we make it that complicated, y'all. It's not complicated. We are our sister's keeper. And we can. if you can help one sister, just say something nice today. It's going to help one sister. I promise it's going to change somebody's life. I promise. And this is the link for the YouTube channel. And then I have posted them by topic so that you can find whatever topic that you would like for somebody to listen to. Let me close out with this paragraph. Untethered Soul, chapter 2, page 22. I'm a nerd, y'all. If you want to free yourself, you must first become conscious enough to understand your predicament. Then you must commit yourself to the inner work of freedom. You must do this as if your life depended on it, because it does. As of right now, your life is not your own. It belongs to your inner critic. You have to take it back. Stand firm and release the hold that your inner critic has on you. This is your life. You must reclaim it. I'm telling you guys, it's a wonderful thing. It is a, it is a wonderful thing. And stop defending your ego. Our major struggles end up being with our own inner fears and insecurities and destructive behaviors. <sighs> right. It, and here's the, Beverly, I'm trying to get off of here. But oh my God, here's the thing. That inner critic will remind you, boo, it will take you back to 10. It will take you back to 6. It will take you back to seven. But Jojo, you remember when you heard your daddy say that you wasn't his child? You was a bastard. Your mama didn't want you. And it would take me back to my husband, my ex my ex-husband, when he said, Don't nobody want you, don't nobody love you, don't nobody care about you. I'm the only person gonna love your kids, don't love you. It will take you back and it will replay every little single detail. And you got to come to the point, sister, where you say, Shut up and go sit down. Put them, as my mama say, put a muzzle on their mouth. And you've got to learn to silence that inner critic because they know your language. Your inner you knows your language. It knows what you're most afraid of, period. And because your brain wants to keep you safe, it's going to remind you every time you try to step out and do something different. It's going to remind you, wait a minute, Jojo, you from Far City, you can't do that. What are you doing? Hello? Let me remind you that people tried this before. I'm just saying, A to the men. And when I tell y'all, I'm a very visual person in my mind. The inner critic JoJo is sitting over there with her lips sewed shut because she can't say nothing because ain't nothing she can say to me that's going to help me get to where I need to be. So she can't. She can't live here. When I dare to be powerful, to use my strength in the service of my vision, then it becomes less and less important whether I'm afraid. And we ain't got time for her over there chit-chatting and talking. We ain't got time for that because we got things to do. 
All right, guys, I hope this has helped somebody because it has truly helped me today. It helped me last night and I walk, I walk, I work through it. I can work through it quicker than I can. But if you're not willing to do the work, it's going to be hard. Are uh, you protecting yourself from your growth? And there, there can't be no part of you that you're not willing to look at ever, period. I'm addressing my ego problem. I'm addressing my fear problem. I'm addressing I got to know everything problem. I, I'm addressing all of it and I have and it gets easier. So before I get mad, I check myself. Jojo, why you mad? Why you feeling some type of way? Why you think she got an attitude towards you or did you bring the attitude to her? And when you check yourself, boo, guess what happens? My relationships change because then I don't have self-imposed restrictions on other people that they have no idea about, but I gave to them because I wanted them to have it. But they don't know nothing about it because I didn't tell them because I gave them to them secretly because that's how we do people. And that's how people are doing you. That's why you can never live up to anybody else's expectations of yourself other than you. You're never going to be what your mama wants you to be. You're never going to be enough for your sister, your brother, your cousin, your mama, your daddy, your girlfriend, your man, your boo thing. Never going to be enough. Until you're enough for yourself, it will never manifest into reality anywhere else. I promise you. Live and witness. Please make sure you come. August the 23rd through the 25th. I am my sister's keeper retreat. I invite you. Please make sure you bring a girlfriend with you. Tickets are on sale for early bird special right now. Please make sure you share it. I greatly appreciate everybody joining me for the Fearless Morning Show. It's been my pleasure. And I appreciate you guys talking back to me because it's just not a way one-way monologue. Um, I hopefully share something how I live past crazy so you guys don't have to. Hope you have an amazing Tuesday. Please be safe out there if you're going back to work. Welcome back to a working Tuesday. And this is Take Action Tuesday. Um, the retreat is in Clearwater, uh, Florida, bit.ly, girlfriend retreat 2019. That's the link right there. So um, the tickets are on sale now and it is going to be it's, going, it's not going to be one of those things where we sit in a conference room and listen to somebody talk. Like It's going to be an intimate group of us girlfriends, and we're going to be chilling. We're going to be, you know, we're going to put on clothes, but we're going to have our pajamas. We're going to be in our casual clothes, and we're going to do some work. Like We're going to, for real, understand how to live past crazy, and we're going to walk away with a blueprint, your own personal blueprint on how you can begin to live past crazy and how you are the torchbearer for your family. You are it. You are the curse breaker, torch bearer, changer, millionaire. You are all the things for your family. And you, we going to get the tools to help get us there. And at least develops and bond with our sisters. Because that's what it's all about. We are our sisters keeper. All right, guys. I hope you have an amazing Tuesday. I so went over and I didn't mean to. I hope you have an amazing Tuesday. And I will see you here bright and early tomorrow morning. Have a good one.